Sophia, what do you make of the point that the private sector is doing a lot, but there's this tension and suspicion, perhaps, between the two sides, and they're not actually selling what they're, they're doing properly. So, the, you know, they, they are sustainable, but they're not necessarily selling themselves as such. Exactly. I don't think if they really understand, it's exactly the point that David made. Um, they do a lot, but they don't know how to communicate this, how to incentivize, and how to prove, really, that what they are doing is very responsible. Um, I'll go really to the, I mean, I'm heading a global communication agency, and we do work at the same time with lots of different governments and private entities as well, specializing quite a lot in the travel industry. And, you know, they all come to us and they want to make the difference. They said, we have the most amazing places, we have the most amazing business, we want travelers to come to us. Uh, can you run a campaign for us? And we do, and we do award-winning campaigns, which is an easy task for us. But the question is, and this is my worry every day, whether this is sustainable. So when you talk about the art of communication, I've been hearing everyone today using the word responsible. And I say, I want all of us to try and think. We have an iceberg in front of us. We're looking at this image, and the iceberg is melting. And I'm looking at you and I say, Max, you're responsible. Or imagine, though, there is another image with your wife and your child. She's holding your baby. I'm looking at you and I say, Max, make me cry. you are responsible. <laughs> this is, I think, the art of communication. It's exactly the same word. The it's exactly the same action. Exactly. So I think all our campaigns, whatever we do, should not be just functional, but they should be emotional. In the communication campaigns, how are you selling the value of a sustainable holiday when realistically a lot of travellers are still just very price sensitive, aren't they? They're going for the cheapest option rather than paying a bit more. How are you convincing them? Well, first of all, there, there have been many uh, statistics in the past and they seem to be extremely promising because it seems that 85% of the people are really ready to invest more if it is for a green holiday. Is that younger people? Because it Fernando is, was talking about how younger people seem more engaged in that than I would older say that people. it's the baby boomers and the younger generation as well. Now, this is now the irony because 85%, as I said, of the people declare that they're ready to spend more. But if you look at the actual statistics, you see that it's only 15%. And I think this is our problem, that we do not really practice what we preach. I keep on saying that we have three categories of people. We have the deep greens, the lazy greens and the non-greens. The non-greens, thank God, they are the smallest percentage. The largest one, though, is the lazy greens, which, as I say, they although care, they but want... They're not acting on it. Exactly, they're not acting. And in order for us, really, to be able to have successful campaigns, I say, do we want an eco-friendly tourism? The only way to move this forward is by implementing ego-friendly campaigns. And an ego-friendly campaign means something that will incentivize, as I said, people to invest their time and soul as well into green uh, campaigns, into green actions. And when I say for them to feel that it is good for themselves, for their, for their ego, Again, it's the same thing. The first one is how can they save money? So ask the governments, how do we really prove to the uh, private entities that if they start implementing eco-friendly policies, then they will uh, risk their reputational uh, risk, uh, they will reduce their costs, they will uh, respond to the consumer's demand, and they will have much more profit coming in for a long term. Well, is the answer perhaps shaming unsustainable projects? I know it's very negative, but rather than promoting sustainable work, saying, actually, this is a really good option to go for instead of that one. I know everyone's afraid of that in the industry. But. Once again, I think this is the thing. How do we present the things? We should never be making, feel people, making people feel guilty. We should be making people feel that they are part of something really amazing. And what I keep on saying, you know, to most of the conference I'm speaking to, is that all of us, in the end of the day, were here because we think that we're doing something which is 
amazing and we're playing a small part out of it. And in the end of the day, if you think about it from a younger boy to an older man, they all have a soul. And I say all the renewable energy that we're looking for out there, in the end of the day starts from here from the energy mm. of our hearts. And to make it a bit pro more practical so that I'm not accused that I'm only saying emotional stories, I was reading an article in Forbes magazine the other day and they were saying that if we really want to have in place all the technologies that we need and the strategies for a renewable uh, future, then we need approximately $1 billion uh, annually to invest, which is, of course, a big amount of money. At the same time, though, if you calculate how many international and domestic trips we have every year, and if you try to divide this amount of money, the one billion for every trip, then each one of us should spend $11 in order to secure our future, which is actually the amount of buying a pizza. So... <laughs> Sophia, you're talking about how technology and communication is it's all there for you now, isn't it? You feel, but it's not being used by well, the companies. It's, it's exactly that, Max. The good news that is that we have technologies, we have strategies here and now to use. The bad news is that we do not use them. And what I keep on saying is that behavior change is really the key to sustainability. And the essence of behavior change is communication. I was, again, reading another article of Bill Gates who was saying that if he was down to his last dollar, he would definitely spend it on communication with his key stakeholders. So this is exactly what all countries should do. All our campaigns should have all the green elements in there, but as I said, without making people feel guilty, but by incentivizing them. And how do you do this as well? You do it by choosing people and stories that everyone can familiarize with. These bold stories, and you don't say you are responsible, but you are responsible. And you can change this and you can make it happen. I think this is exactly the keynote message that we should all take from here. You know what, I've been thinking while you were speaking before about the earthquake. Um, and let me just say that I am I'm not just happy, I'm proud of working with the Mexican government, uh, which is one of our clients. I can tell you that I think last week I have experienced the essence of technology, of sustainability, but of human power as well. And I'm gonna tell you the following. We have an office in Mexico City with 20 people working for us. Um, when this happened, I woke up in the morning, I checked my phone, I watched the news straight away, and I said, oh my God, are they safe? So I called my team. Some seconds after, I started receiving messages on Twitter, on WhatsApp, on all different groups. And all the 20 of those, they said, Sophia, we're not working today, we're gonna go and help. They all became a very big family. We started, we've been contacted by the government as well, and they said straight away, the immediate reaction, they said we have to post press releases and let the people know that everything is safer now. We're going to take care of the tourists. So there has been this, this amazing result of cooperation between the private sector, the government, but at the same time, the locals and the travelers. And let me tell you the following as well. Thanks to technology and what we have and this energy I've been speaking to, from the very beginning, who've been contacted also by a company, it is a local, I'm just not going to mention the name, a local beer company in Mexico, uh, who said, we want you to produce, we, we will invest in it, but you know, we're not making any money, the biggest video in order to support and show how beautiful Mexico, but mainly Mexicans remain. So big congrats, it has been amazing, and you have proven to the world as well how this is what we call sustainability. Yeah, thoughts very much to the people of Mexico. i just finish with um, what I did earlier, which is really asking you for a thought, really, on World uh, Tourism Day in relation to sustainability in particular. I keep on saying that we are very blessed, and I'm blessed personally, because we are working in the, the happiest industry in the world. However, unfortunately, it is an industry as well that it's a victim, but a vector as well. So the only way forward is the decarbonization. Uh, will, this, will we disincentivize tourism? Will we, can we afford as well with 10% uh, almost of the global GDP to lower this growth? No. 
So indeed, the only way forward is decarbonization. And I keep on saying that all over the world, all the destinations have exactly the same ingredients. We have these seven nodes, you know, it, we have do to do. With these seven nodes, we create uh, music, we create completely different songs. And it is exactly the same thing. In every destination, we have these seven ingredients. We have mountains, we have sea, we have hotels. The question is how we piece them together. And with this note, though, most importantly, think that we need always to have an eighth one, which is our main tone. And this tone is protect the environment, protect the future, protect ourselves. Thank you. <laughs>